presentation show bring it on I'm your host Shin Ayong in season three we have 18 contestants from different countries all promoting their unique cultures right here on Arirang TV so it's your chance to sit back and learn about the different culture tradition history and systems that make up our colorful world I hope you're ready because it's a brand new season let's start by meeting our judges he knows what our presenters are going through. Last season's champion, One Kind. Yeah, 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 it's your boy, One Kind. Uh, let's have a good time here on Bring It On. Woohoo! Woo and lighting up our studio since her first appearance, the beautiful Punita. Hello. Hello, thank you for having me again. I'm very excited. Never been to Africa, so Woo. I'm just excited what they have to offer. Woo! Our very own South African beauty, Bronin. Welcome back. Oh, oh yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm from South Africa, so today is a pretty special episode. I'm so looking forward to what you guys uh, have to present. I also have great expectations because I've been to two out of the three countries. So wow. I hope you're prepared. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and last not least, the man who is impossible to impress, Ilya from Russia. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm very looking forward to today's presentations because Africa is very beautiful and I'm expecting a lot from you guys. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's meet our contestants. Today is the African preliminary. So hailing from Kenya, Daniel. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Daniel, and uh, yeah, I'll be talking about animal uh, uh, protection. So I believe that we're going to have a good time together. Thank you. Yeah. And representing Tanzania, Davis. Yeah, hello everyone. I'm Davis Julius from Tanzania. I'll be presenting about one of the wildlife conservation projects going on in my country. So stay tuned, and I'm going to bring it on. <laughs> Frank from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm Frank from Congo. I will be talking about Gorilla Mountain today, and I hope I'm going to have fun time. Thanks. Now, Africa makes up about 20% of the world's landmass, and we have three amazing men representing the different parts of Africa. So today is going to be a very interesting episode. So let's find out a little more about them, starting from Frank from the Democratic Republic of Congo. I hear that you are an actor here in Korea. Wow. wow. Where did we see you? Tell us. Movies, I've done that like, um, with ha Jong Woo. Wow. Yeah, it was out like last year, which is um what is that? Um, oh you don't remember? I don't remember the title. The title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh Ha Jong Woo and Ha Ji Won was inside. Oh wow. Wow. Oh. Uh, yeah. Ah Ho San Wan. Ho San already. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, you should know that. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what character did you play in that movie? I was an uh, I represent like me. American soldier. Really? Oh. Yeah. So did you have any lines? Yeah. Just a little bit. A little bit. It's like five Do you shows. remember? <laughs> yeah, did you show okay. us? Yeah. Do you yeah, remember yeah. your line? Yeah. Well, I was asking like, uh, how do you want to do that? And I just say like, chocolate to us, eh? That's there a we solid go. acting <laughs> right there. Okay. And I also hear that you are of royal descent. Now, what does this mean? Well, in Congo, we have kind of king stuff in the tribes. So I'm um, from in the king family. Oh, That's crazy. Wow. So, uh, wow. so does it mean that we have to salute you? Your royal or, or bow down? <laughs> oh, my or goodness. Or <laughs> well, my grandpa is a king in the Congo. In oh, the my tribe, God, actually. really? So, uh, yeah. That's crazy. Wow. What's the name of your tribe? Bashi. 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 Yeah, What's yeah. your traditional clothing color? Oh. Uh, Traditional color. Is a kind of yellow? Yellow. yellow. Okay. Yellow, something like that. Okay. 
Yeah. Wow, I never thought I'd say that, but we have a prince in our midst. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Daniel from Kenya. Hello. Yes. Hello, hi. Um, Kenya is known for their celebrations and festivities, am I right? Exactly. We have a lot of celebrations and uh, one of the most biggest uh, festivals is in March, whereby uh, it's called the East African National uh, Festival, whereby people gather together and it goes only for three days. Mm. And yeah, people dance, sing this music, uh, theaters, you know, lectures and all those kind of stuff. It's huge. It's really big. Right. I would love to check that out because Africa has that unique sense of rhythm. Yeah, right? yeah that's true. And coincidentally, Daniel, you're a singer. Yes. Oh. He is a singer. Can we hear some singing? Yeah, can we hear some singing? I want to hear some vocals. Um, Could you introduce us to the African music? Uh, African music? What am I going to sing? <laughs> <laughs> was jamming it on, Davis looked a little left out. Yeah! It's, it's yeah. like he wanted to jam his yeah. 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 Why didn't you join him? I don't know, maybe I don't know how to sing, but uh, the music was great. Right, and I, I understood what they were singing, so I was just backed them up. Like. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, he didn't yeah. join them because he has a very special stage just for himself. Uh -oh. Wow! Oh, wow. Yes, oh. the Davis rivalry begins. Dance. <laughs> yes, David can dance, so he's going to dance a little for us. So why don't we count up? Yeah! yeah. Oh my Oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 Now we lay a head. Now we lay a to do it by yourself though because I know like in Africa most of the traditional dances like you say yeah. have at least sort of 10 people that's it, that's and it, you play it. off of each other so you yeah. did really well I also love your shirt is that oh. from back home yeah it's my mom who made that one oh. wow. she made it she made it before I came to Korea wow wow, wow it's fantastic yeah, it thanks. is it was a beautiful shirt yeah. and yeah. some beautiful dancing I tried at the sidelines <laughs> and I don't think I've why don't you show us a little bit well I mean like I don't think I have <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's it was nice. Oh, okay, so I got a compliment. That's good. That's good. Eight for effort. That's so wrong. Okay, all new Bring It On. We are thrilled to introduce our contestants from 18 countries. Today is the African preliminary. So to the viewers around the world, please show your support for our presenters. 
for season three. Here are the rules. Here are the rules. Only one presenter will be crowned the champion. Six teams of three compete in the continental preliminaries. The winner of each team stays in the competition. Three runners up with the highest scores proceed to the redemption round. Winners of the preliminaries go up against each other. Runners up of episodes eight and nine face the winner of the redemption round. The three winners duke it out on the final stage. Here on Bring It On, your opinion matters. Your vote counts for 30% of the total scores, so log on to our application and vote for your favorite item. But remember that by the time this episode airs on Adidas TV, voting for next episode's item would be open. Now, every week we select a new theme and our presenters will choose their items accordingly. So, what is the topic for today? Let's check it out. Today's topic is Africa's wildlife protection system. Now, Africa is home to many amazing creatures of the wild, and the governments of different countries are working hard to preserve, to come up with effective protection systems. So let's talk a little bit about that. Can you guys give us a little bit of an example in your countries? Mm, for instance, Kenya, <coughs> uh, elephant, elephant poaching. We've had an issue with elephants poaching because people go out there, poach elephants, and you know, uh, take over the ivory and mm -hmm. you know, they trade ivory. So that has been a big issue mm -hmm. in Kenya. So what are you guys doing to protect them? Uh, the government right now is kind of trying to tighten security mm -hmm. you know, in the borders to make sure that there's no uh, uh, the trade of ivory locally and also internationally. So the government is still working on that. Yes, and they actually have a Google map that exactly. shows that, right? Exactly. Oh, so wow. basically, you can even see elephants way back home. Yeah. You don't have to go to the national park. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It's amazing. Oh. Likewise, Kenya, poaching seems to be... Poaching seems to be a big problem, like, for the rest of Africa and, let's say, worldwide, right? Mm -hmm. Same to South Africa, some Asian countries like Thailand and stuff like that. So we have the same conservation projects that have been started in my country, like the one I'm going to present today. So just wait, I'll bring it on later on. Bring it on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about in um, Congo? Well, in Congo we have a lot of animals, but we have this kind of special animal in Congo, that what we call okapi. And? Yeah, it's uh, really special in the Congo. We, Whoa, wow. what is that? Uh, yeah, really, you cannot find it in another it's country. Deep, bro. We just, yeah, we that's only that's have that in Congo. <laughs> It's not a deer. It's just like a zebra custom. Yeah, it's zebra. It's zebra. It looks like zebra, but it's not zebra. It's like a zebra mixed with a little hyena. Kind of. Oh, yeah, I can see them. What does it call them, Rotaki? Okapi. Okapi. Yeah, so it's just special, and you just live in the Congo. If you bring it to another country, it cannot survive. Wow. Wow. Yeah, they tried it, like, in Rwanda, you know, we have, like, next to Congo, we have Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya. But they try to bring them to other countries, but they die. They only survive, survive in the on this land. Mm. Right. Okay. Yeah. They're so special. They're actually called the unicorn of Africa. Oh. That's their nickname. I see the I see the horn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So wildlife and its protection in Africa. That's the topic for today: protecting endangered species of animals of the earth. So let's start the presentations. You know, so you have to do that. I mean, what about animals? The animal? I mean, uh, your presentations, you don't need to know that. So. This is how our point system works. From the judges, 40%. Studio audience, 20%. Bring it on application, 30%. And with a successful talkback session, one presenter will earn a bonus 10%. The votes will determine first, second, and third places. Now, if you're in the studio, you have the power to change today's outcome. Listen carefully to the presentation and get ready to toss your questions during the Q&A session. 
If you're watching the studio recording live via the Adirang TV website or YouTube, you also have the power to change today's outcome by voting. And while you're at it, please send us your comments and suggestions. We love hearing from you. Now, without further ado, let's start the presentation. Our first presenter is Daniel from Kenya. Daniel, you have four minutes and a Q&A session will follow. But first, we have a very special message for Daniel. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate a Kenyan, a Daniel, and the entire Bring It On Season 3. Go, go, Daniel, and Bring It On Season 3. Thank you. So today I'll be talking about animal protection and mainly the elephants because elephants are so cute. They're so, you know, they're so lovely. But now they end up suffering out there. They don't have anyone to take care of them. And people are poaching elephants in the name of trading ivory. As a result of this, they end up suffering out there. Some also suffer through accident. But uh, in Kenya, there's one organization by the name David Sheldrake Wildlife Trust that takes care of these animals. And I want to introduce to you this uh, organization, but before I do that, I have a short song that I'd like you guys to listen. There's a song for the elephants out there that are suffering without no one to take care of them. I can feel the pain, and I can feel what they're going through. Listen to the words. This makes me cry. When I see the elephants die, let us unite as one and save our environment. Let us unite as one and save our environment. This makes me cry. When I see the elephants die, let us unite as one. And save our environment, this makes me cry. For real, it does make me cry when I see elephants suffering out there and they don't have anyone taking care of them. Statistics state that over 30,000 elephants have been poaching in Africa. And as a result of this, infants have been left in jeopardy with no one to take care of them. But DSWT is an animal, is an animal orphanage in Kenya, Nairobi, and actually the number one world successful orphanage that we have. Now, it also helps, it helps rehabilitate the elephants orphanage. What they do is that they go out there, they search for elephants that are suffering, that have been poached, that have been hunted, that are suffering uh, because of accidents. They bring them to the orphanage, rehabilitate them, they treat them, and after a period of six months, they're taken back to, uh, to, to, to the National uh, Wildlife Service whereby they transit, they, they transit into wild again. Now, the purpose of DSWT, number one, is to advocate, to speak for the elephants, you know, to tell people, hey, guys, let's stop poaching because it's not doing us good. Number two is to protect the animals since they don't have a protector out there. So they also protect the animals. Number three, as I mentioned earlier, to rehabilitate the animals. Now, the nursery takes in often ele elephants from all over Kenya. As I mentioned before, the DSWT, they go all over Kenya, seeing elephants that have been affected there by poachers, and then they bring them to the nursery and they take care of them. One of the elephant keepers at the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust Orphans Nursery in Nairobi is Julius. Mm. This guy takes care, good care of these animals and also trains other staff on how you can take care of the animals. David Shedrick Wildlife Trust is the world's most successful orphanage for elephants rescue and rehabilitation, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, there is a way forward as to how we can stop these elephants poaching. Number one, the only way to save elephants today is to stop the trade of ivory, both locally and also internationally. Mm -hmm. This can also happen by putting, you know, really strict security at the borders and also at the port to make sure that there's no trade of ivory going on. And that's why I'm here today to let you know about this. And hence, we can also help save, save these precious animals by also saying no to the use of ivory. Because once you use ivory products, you're still encouraging, uh, you know, uh, ivory trade and stuff. Thank you for listening and watching. <laughs>
Now that's all the time we have for Daniel. That was a very informative session. Now, if you have any questions, judges. Well, that organization you said, uh, is it government funded or is it private? It's private funded, but they, they try to ask for donation from you know, different sectors mm -hmm. uh, for you know, good wishes and stuff. Do you know when it started from? It started from 1950-something, but I'm not Really? Yeah. I'm not it's so a long pleased. time. So it's yeah. a long time. Mm -hmm. This organization, why does it focus on elephants exactly, isn't it? The ivory is, as far as I'm concerned, ivory, like a lot of animals, animals mm -hmm. have yeah. these tasks, ivory tasks. Uh, why does it concentrate on uh, elephants only? A lot of poachers also, call, uh, they focus mo mostly on elephants, on the elephants. They just want to get, you know, ivory from the elephants, so that's why. They mostly focus on elephants. Mm. We'll Let's find out if our studio audience share that sentiment. Audience, do you have any questions for Daniel? Yes. If I will go to Africa and, okay, I want to see elephants, but not just as a tourist, but I want to help them. Is there mm. any way? Exactly. There is a way forward. Uh, the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, they have a website that you can, you know, mm. you can follow up the link. And they also have some ways on how you know, you can donate. donate. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, you can do some donations. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Okay, that's all the time we have for question and answer. Now it's time to vote. Let's start with our studio audience. Studio audience, if you liked Daniel's presentation, get out your smartphones and get ready to vote. And now it's time for our judges to vote. Now, our judges are very passionate about animals and about protecting them. So I think it's one of both. They're really difficult to win over or pretty easy. So let's find out. Judges, if you liked Daniel's presentation, get ready to press the buzzer. Representing Kenya, Dan Gadner. And the result? Your vote becomes final on my count of three. Three, two, one. Press the buzzer. <laughs> two out of four. Bronin and one kind oh, voted for Daniel. Of course, Ilya, you didn't vote. I'm not surprised there, but can we hear why? Um, as it always goes, I always strive for more digits. I need to know numbers. He like, likes numbers. I, He's in a this, Russian. Yes, probably that's Russians it. Russians like oh, that's I don't know. Yeah. Very exact. That's the reason. I mean, the presentation was really good, but um, I didn't quite get the scale of the problem, you know, because right. you didn't have the numbers on your presentation. And that's why I asked a question, like, why is it elephants? How much elephants right. were yeah. killed and stuff? So we need to know the scale of the uh, catastrophe. Right. Yeah. yeah, right? So to be able to react to that. Mm. So I didn't quite get the feeling yeah. about it. Yeah, so. right, right, right. Right. Those are all valid points made by our judges. Now, we've added the audience points and our judges' points. Here are the studio points for Daniel. From the audience, 16 points. From the judges, 20 points for a total of 36 points from the studio. Good job, Daniel. Thank you. Woo -hoo. Now, this is without the online votes. So the application votes, they're key coming. So we don't know the final results yet. So if you liked Daniel's presentation, vote for Daniel on our application. Next up is Davis from Tanzania. His presentation is about the Salus project, but before we hear from him, here are his supporters. Davis. Fighting. Davis, I'm here to wish you luck. I know you can do it. Just go fight for it and bring it on, man. I hope you're gonna make it. Go for it, Davi. We believe in you. Together we say hello. I am Nine Davis in this team. Let's all cheer for him. Davis, bring it on. Fighting.
Okay, hi everyone, I'm Davis Julius, I'm from Tanzania, and I'll be presenting about Selu's project. So let's start by watching this video here. As you can see, it's in one of the game reserves in my country. <laughs> yeah, the Japoche is trying to hunt down animals. As you can see, there he's trying to aim. <laughs> yeah, but it was it wasn't the elephant actually, it was just a so yeah. And suddenly he appeared like the game reserve officer. Then he saw like someone who is not belonging to the game reserve. He's not responsible for anything there. Then he suddenly turned into a <laughs> hero like that. <laughs> then he went and attacked him and then took the gun of the poacher. Poaching is not allowed in Tanzania. Yeah. As it said. So here we go. The Salus project. Salus is one of the game reserves in my country. Actually, it's the largest protected wildlife reserve in the world and the largest remaining wilderness reserves in Africa. It covers approximately 50,000 kilometer square areas, same to Costa Rica or twice the size of Belgium. In 1982, it was named as one of the World Heritage Sites by UNESCO. As you can see, that's a map of it. Here we go, there are like some animals in there. You can see elephants, hypos, there are buffaloes, there are lions, cheetah, and about 350 species of birds. Mm. As you can see, in 2014, UNESCO, there was a meeting in Doha, which enlisted this game reserve as the, one of the game reserves in danger. That was due to a number of factors. The first one was about high rate poaching. Mostly here is elephant and animals, but my case today will go more to elephants. For about 40 years ago, the Salus Game Reserve saved as 100,000 home for elephants. But in 2013, the number was like 13,000, where in 2009, the number was about 39,000. So you can see there's like a loss of 67% of elephants for the four years. Mm -hmm. Also, there are like mining activities. There are low-scale low scale extraction activities, and also there's a proposed uranium project that is about to start within the region. Also, there are human activities and funding and insufficient management due to the government. So here you can see like natural resources and sources of energy, those adjacent communities cut down trees, and there also are human and elephant conflicts. Here you can see the Salus project was started by the government through the Ministry of Education and Tourism, through Wildlife Division and other international conservation societies. They had only four main goals, I can say that all ways of combating this problem. The first one was by we're using well-trained rangers. As you can see, they are volunteers, they receive trainings, and then they are ready to, to face poachers. Also, there are 24 hours patrol vehicles. And they go around the park days and nights. Also here, you can see we use this un 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 unmanned vehicles or silent drones. The drones, you can see the video here. The drones, they can be sent to the park and cover the ledge earlier at a time. They can bring back feedback, like photos that can zoom, let's say a car that has entered the reserve without, I mean, authorities or stuff like that. And then they can trace back who has been to the park, where are they going, they can, they can get the hints. And here, finally, they provide conservation education to adjacent communities on like what are the advantages of tourism industry, like they can receive social services and stuff like that. Also, like, they are, they, are, they are told to cooperate with the government to report any poaching moves that are going on in and out of the game reserve. That was all. Thanks. Wow. Yeah. 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 Time's uh -huh. up. Judges, I'm sure you have many questions for Davis, so ask away. Ah. Is ya? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. Um, I don't actually have a question. Like, I got pretty much out of this presentation, <coughs> so... We'll wait for you. Um, yeah. Bronin, locals who help by reporting poachers, yes. uh, what sort of benefits do they get? Because often locals can actually make money on the side if they help the poachers. So, for example... Yeah. Actually, for that one, I'm not quite so sure about it. But the government is trying to develop those places near the game reserves, let's say by building hospitals, schools to improve education systems. So in, in another way, it's like when the indigenous or those adjacent communities see the benefits from, I mean, tourism industry, means they are ready to cooperate with the government to report any poaching moves that are going on 
nearby the game reserves. Got it. Yep. Ilya, we're back to you. <laughs> well, is, um, am I correct in understanding that it, it's, you're talking about the National Park, which is the UNESCO preserve site, which is being covered by the government right now project to preserve animals right yep, now? Yep, yep. Yeah, so um, is it the only one national park right now there like in Tanzania, or is there many parks that are covered by this project? Actually, the, the, this Toulouse Game Reserve was the reserve that had a high number of elephants compared to other national mm -hmm. parks and game reserves. That's why the government mostly focused on this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's all the time we have for questions for Davis. Now it's time to vote. Let's start with our studio audience. Studio audience, please get out your smartphones and get ready to vote. And now let's turn to our judges. What will they give? Your vote becomes final on my count of three. Representing Tanzania, Davis Julius. And the results? Your vote becomes final on my count of three. Three, two, one, press the buzzer. Two, one, press the buzzer. No suspense there. Okay, so Elia and Bronin voted for Davis, but not Punita and one kind. Now, I am mildly surprised yeah. that Elia <laughs> took the effort to move his hand <laughs> and press the button yeah. for Davis. I thought so. he was going to vote for him because yes. he, he discussed a lot of uh, numbers yeah. in his presentation. Oh, okay. So is yeah. that true? Yes. This is the kind of presentation I like. There was a lot of statistics, a lot of numbers. Uh, a lot of information that you had input in this presentation, I liked it a lot. Um, despite the, all that fact, um, there were some weak points about this presentation as yeah, well. Yeah. And firstly, you did a very um, not sufficient, I would say, job about explaining all those figures. Because you had a lot of very good and very nice information on the slides, but you didn't actually pronounce them. Time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know that, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless. <laughs> So two of our judges voted for Davis. Let's find out what our studio audience thought of his presentation. Here are the studio points for Davis. From the Ooh. audience, 17 points, and from the judges, 20 points for a total of 37 points. Now, there's still time to vote on our application, which takes up 30% of the total score. And now our studio score between Daniel and David is neck and neck, only one point apart. So your vote is more important than ever. Log on to our Bring It On application and vote for your favorite presentation. <laughs> our last presenter is Frank, representing the Democratic Republic of Congo. But before we hear from him, we have a message from his country. Frank, you fighting! Hey, Frank. Fighting, man. I can't wait to hear your presentation. I wish you all the best. Good luck. <laughs> well, I'm Frank from DR Congo. Today I'm going to talk about a special person, is a friend of mine, famous, has a lot of stuff, qualities that we're going to discover after. Hi everybody, I'm Frank and today I'm going to introduce you my very, very lovely boy friend. Hi, I am Frank is friend, mountain gorilla. It's not just one gorilla that we have. We have a lot of gorillas in my country, <laughs> which is the Democratic Republic of Congo, and they are really special for us. What's happened to you? You don't want to drink? Hey, this is true. Hey, I am your friend. Talk to me. Come on, what's wrong? No, I have no friend. I am real lonely. Even girlfriend, I don't have. And all my friends, they just run away. How am I going to do? Oh my god. Oh, are you crying? <laughs> Come on. I 
I'm sorry. Well, as you can see today, I'm going to talk about the Democratic Republic of Congo's effort to protect mountain gorilla. So, uh, to introduce this uh, park, national park is uh, Virunga actually, which is in Congo, but we have it in the border between DR Congo, Rwanda, and Uganda. The average, you can see the numbers, 150 centimeters, and weight is 90 to 180 kilometer. And uh, gorillas are herbivore. They eat leaves, stem, roof, fruit, and mushrooms. And also, their they nature is like, they are really lovely anymore. Everyone wants to keep their, even at home. You, keep, you don't need to go to the park to see like gorillas. You can buy, and then you keep it in your house, and then you can enjoy time you play with them every day. So, the danger that we have, like, we figured out like a lot of gorillas are dying in the Congo. And uh, now we still have only 650 gorillas remaining in the park. And uh, we found the causes like because of habitant, like people, they are moving in uh, um, cities and uh, we have this kind of trough. So they, there is nobody to take care of them. So they are kind of like, lonely and they die because of, they don't have something to eat or someone to treat uh. them very nice. So we thank God, but we have this kind of uh, in international organization, which uh, is the only Congo and uh, which we call IGCP, which has the goal to protect gorillas, and they're kind of uh, to confirm the worldwide mountain gorilla population and stabilize the mountain gorilla position and just kind of to protect them. And they're supporting with the Cong Congolese government. They're working together to do this kind of job. And uh, as you can see, we have Virunga Park. This is in the Congo. And this is uh, like the image of like kind of white person. Actually, we are chocolate. And we have a white person who comes to the Congo to kind of take care of uh, gorillas that we have. And this is the mountain where we can find a uh, like, gorilla. As you can see, people in the park, they're working hard to uh, kind of taking care of them. Well, and uh, when we found gorilla babies, there is this organization, they take care of them like mothers because they are so young, there is nobody to take care of them in the park. So the organization that take care of them, they just to try to treat them until when they grow up, they just bring them back in the park. And time is up. I'm going to have to stop you right there. Your four minute is up. Was Ray. that your last PPT? Yeah, this is... My last PPT. Uh, but okay. still, he could no, not finish yeah. in time. He clearly had some more to say, but he could not keep our okay. time limit. So let's use the question and answer <clears throat> session to ask him questions about the uh, last part of his presentation. Judges? Do you know why people are targeting gorillas? Um, for the elephants, we know that it is for their tusks or right. their meat. But do you know why it's for these? Gorillas? Actually, we have this kind of problem because sometimes people want to keep them at home and the government try to stop them to not live with them at home like as an animal because animal cannot live with someone at home. Uh -huh. So it's kind of fighting between government and people because people, they love them to have them like, you know, play with them. As a pet? Yeah, wow. at home. But okay. government is trying to stop it. Stop them to not take them out. Now, let's turn to our studio audience if they have any questions for Frank. Studio audience? Yes, I see a hand over there. Thank you for your presentation. I wanted to ask, it's, you said that there, there are 650 gorillas in, in Congo, but are there uh, any gorillas in other countries in Africa? And if there are, are governments are cooperating uh, for protecting the gorillas? Well, I'm pretty sure that because they have the same kind of animals, maybe Congolese government could ask like some information to other countries where they have gorilla, how to treat them. And we have this kind of organization when they came to Congo because they know much how to protect them, how to treat them, they have more knowledge about it. So they try to work together and 
you are taking care, really care of them. Yep. Okay, that's all the time we have for question and answer session. Now it's time to vote. First, we'll start with our studio audience. Studio audience, please get out your smartphone and get ready to vote. Now it's our judge's turn. If you liked Frank's presentation, get ready to press the buzzer. Representing the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Frank. And the result? Your vote becomes final on my count of three. Three, two, one, press the buzzer. So only Bronin voted for Frank. Let's hear from you first, Bronin. Why did you vote for Frank? I think your presentation is flawed. I think you definitely needed to explain better. Mm -hmm. However, I did come here with some background knowledge so I could follow you and I could understand you. I think for people who are not from Africa, they would really struggle. But luckily for you, I have some sort of background knowledge, so I could follow your PPT, I could follow what you're saying, and I almost expected that your final PPT would answer the question that I had. You needed to go into a little bit more depth about why the gorillas are in fact endangered, but I liked how you covered what the government is trying to do, and when we did ask you questions, you could respond. You had done some research, so I feel like you could definitely improve, but it was good enough for me. So that's what our judges thought. Only Bronin voted for Frank. Let's see how our studio audience responded to his presentation. Here are the studio points for Frank. From the audience, eight points. And from the judges, 10 points for a total of 18 points from the studio. Now, this is a global interactive presentation show. So it's a two-way street for us and the votes are still open. If you liked Frank's presentation, go on to our application and vote for Frank. Also, if you liked Daniel and Davis's presentation, go to our application and vote for them. It counts for 30% of the total score and the vote is not yet close, so you still have time. Now, this would be a good time to remind you of our scoring system. From the judges, 40%, studio audience, 20%, bring it on application, 30% and a bonus 10% for the talkback session. Now, I cannot stress this enough. The votes, the application votes count for 30%. So keep your votes coming. In the meantime, our presenters will have to fight for the last 10%. It's time to talk back. Now it's our presenter's chance to attack and fight back. It's time to talk back. It's an all-out war for that extra 10 points. You have three minutes to outwit your rivals, and your time starts now. Yeah, so for Daniel, my yes. question goes like that. You said six months is enough for, I mean, taking care of the elephants and then sending them back to the parks according to your presentation. So how are you sure that that time is enough? I mean, according to my research, I think it's not enough. How can you explain that? Well, uh, taking care of animals is, uh, I mean, of elephants is not that easy. You know, they require a whole lot of money, like medicine, food, you know, protection. It requires money. So what David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust does is that it only, you know, rehabilitates them for six months. But once they are stable, that's a point. Once they're, once they're stable, they're taken to Savo National Park in the southeast of Kenya where they can transition into wild. So you mean they can even leave there? If they're not stable, they can stay there even maybe for more than a year or two years? Or, yes, yes. Because oh, the given, whole lifetime. The given, the given period of time is six months. That means if they are not, they can still be you know, at the afternoon. So six months is minimum time? Yes. Okay then. And uh, yeah, I will ask you a question. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll be a little bit polite when I'm going to ask you a question. Is, uh, my question is, are you really sure that you got ready 
and you've got a lot of information be before you come to present in this place. I tried my level best to do the research that I, you know, the, the, the best research that I could, you know. Where and how? Uh, at the David's Wild Wildlife Shelter Trust, they have a website where I tried to dig more information in there. And also Google, you know, is always there. Ask a few friends or so, ask the Embassy of Kenya. So, yeah, I tried my level, guess, my level best to get more information, and that's what I presented. If you said more information, there is kind of basic information that you should have, the number of elephant or animals that you have in this kind of realization. Yeah, I know, I know that I missed that one, so I'll work on that next time. Well, you should. Thank you. And for you now, um, you talked about gorillas. You know, I just didn't get the whole thing, because if you say gorillas are being put out there for just pets, just pets like, honestly, like, like pets. Like can, can you imagine a pet in your house? You know, so you have gorilla. And the I mean, what about the, animal? I mean, on uh, your presentation, there was like a height of, I mean, height of gorillas, right? Like yeah. 130 to 180. Mm -hmm. It's like, I mean, it's taller than me. How can you put that? I mean, just that short. I'm short. I mean, so how can I, how can I keep that as a, just a pet animal in my house? I mean, well, we have these kind of people like, uh, I don't know how to call it in English. We say in French like, special, special chasseur. Special experts? Oh, I don't know. You don't need to know that. So they're kind of people, they just go to the mountain, like secretly, then they take gorillas, then they keep their home. Like they just stay with them. Time's home. almost up. But the, but the main point is just to keep them as, I mean, pet animals. Bye. Four, yeah, just pet three, animals that Koreans two, do with Kangaji. One and time <laughs> is up. Now yes. that was a very fierce talk back session. A lot oh, of yeah. valid points were made. So it's up to our judges to decide who to award that extra 10% to. So judges, I'll give you time to discuss among yourselves. So huddle up. Seems like our judges have reached a decision. Now, who will get the extra 10 points? Uh, okay, before they announce the actual name, I would love to say that we love all three of you guys, and it was a really, really Oof. tough decision. Yeah. We actually got a tie. Twice. 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 Yeah. We got a tie twice <laughs> among the judges. So, um, but in the end, uh, we got our decision, and the 10 points, Go to Frank. Oh. Oh. Now, please tell us why. Um, as I said, we have a tie. Um, um, all you guys have a very valid points. You addressed a ve very good reasons to each other. You attacked in a very good manner. We loved it all. But um, Frank, you were more on a like attacking side. That's what we liked about you. And like your verbal skills, your presentation and your delivery was very appealing as well. Yeah. So that's why we voted for you. Okay, so the extra 10 points goes to Frank. Now we really don't know where this competition is going, but soon we will have the final results, so stay tuned. <laughs> I have the final results in my hand and it's time to hear the verdict. We've added the points from our judges, studio audience, viewers, and the bonus point. Now, if you finish third place today, this will be the end of your Bring It On journey. So let's start with the tough announcement. Coming in third place today, Frank. Oh. You had a total of 35.59 points, and the extra 10% did not help you that much. So this is the end of your Bring It On journey. How do you feel? The end? <laughs> the end. Well, it's a competition. There should be someone who's gonna win and someone who's gonna lose. So I appreciate your compliment and everything. I did my best, I did what I could, but next time if we have this kind of program, I will try to do my best and work harder than this. 
Yeah, thanks very much for everybody. Thank you for being on our show. We've enjoyed your presentation and your guitar was amazing. So thank you so much for being on our show. Now, if you would take a seat. Thank you. Ah. Now it's between Daniel and Davis. One of you will be the winner and one of you will be the runner up. Now, who will it be? Are you guys ready to hear the final results? Yeah, right okay, now. please step up to the stage. One of these two presenter is today's winner. Now, if you recall, their studio points were really close. 37 and 36 Six. points, so only one point apart. Did the application votes change things around or did it stay the same? Okay, today's winner had 49.39 points and the runner up 46.02 points. Close. So very close race. So close. I will announce today's winner. Today's winner is with 49.39 points. Davis, congratulations wow. to the winner! Judges, studio audience, bring it on app. Bonus point, and the final score. Today's winner is Davis with 49.39 points. Why do you not look happy? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like I didn't expect it. Like the way he presented, mm -hmm. his verbal was, I mean, very good compared to me. I was rushing, I was just keeping slides, so they say the judges. But I don't know what happened. So kind of, you did corruption. <laughs> not corruption. <laughs> so I, I checked the online boss before coming. I was leading, so maybe, maybe that's what, yeah, put me on a good yeah, position. Yeah, that helps though. Yeah, yeah, yeah online yeah, votes really so. do make a difference. 30%, it does make wow. a difference. Yeah, yeah. So vote, viewers. Please, please vote. <laughs> please vote. Wow, it's too late now. Okay, Davis, you're today's winner. Congratulations. A, a congratulatory, self-congratulatory dance for it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. yeah? Can we see it? Hey! 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 Okay, congratulations, David. Yeah. Survival presentation show, Bring It On. On each episode, three presenters will introduce and promote their unique cultures. We have to say goodbye to Frank today, but next week we will be back with three new presentations. Until we introduce all interesting items around the world, we will keep on bringing it on. See you guys next week. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>